Hello, and welcome to episode three of The Tour Through Time, the series in which I travel through geological deep time, explaining some of the weirdest and wildest parts of our planet's biological history. Last week, we looked at the Ordovician period, a period in which marine life flourished and, at the very end, began to creep its way onto the land, slowly but surely. The Ordovician period ended with a massive extinction event, a global freezing, lowering sea levels and sending the world into an ice age. We pick up in the Silurian period, as the Earth is just beginning to thaw out. Let's check up and see how our little guys are doing, shall we? The Silurian period began 443 million years ago, and with it came a virtual first for our planet. The environment, for once, seemed to be leveling out at a stable temperature. The Earth warmed back up, melting the ice caps, and the sea levels rose yet again, creating all new niches for all new creatures. One of these creatures is coral. The Silurian is when we see the global rise of coral reefs. The continents were also very low compared to today, allowing the oceans to cover even more of the world. Life on land was beginning to pop up here and there, but the Silurian was, first and foremost, an aquatic period. Another creature that began to disperse around the world were fishes, at first being jawless and boneless. These boneless fish were in the class Agnatha and were related to modern lampreys and hagfish. These were the most common fish, but soon they began to be joined by a new kind, the jawed fish. One of these was Romundia. Romundia was small and had a jaw unlike its predecessors. In fact, Romundia not only had a jaw, but it was equipped with a full cartilage skeleton and outer armor. It was a placoderm and was related to the famous Dunkleosteus, however, the latter would come much later. Romundia also had the first little signs of teeth beginning to be developed and a defensive spike sticking from its head. Another milestone for the fishes is that they began to go upstream into the continents and adapting to more freshwater locales, probably following the plants that climbed up the rivers as well. The plants also continued climbing out of the water, a journey began in the Ordovician period. First lichens and mosses, and then vascular plants, mostly a genus called Cooksonia. Vascular meaning that they were able to transport nutrients and water throughout their bodies. They didn't, however, have leaves, and most likely just used their green stalks to soak up the sunlight for photosynthesis. They were small and simple, nothing like the trees that would come later, and mostly stuck to living near rivers and other water sources from which they came. Joining the plant kingdom on the land were representatives of our own kingdom, Animalia, specifically arthropods and arachnids. One of the first that we have body fossils of was a species of millipede called Pneumodesmus. It was around a centimeter long and looked pretty much like the millipedes we have now. But don't let its familiarity fool you, this little bug predated the first vertebrates on land by 50 million years. Oh, you know what that sound means. It's once again time to check up on our little friends the Trilobites. The Ordovician Silurian extinction was hard on Earth, even hitting the trilobites, but trilobites managed to scrape by, with 63% of the pre existing genera surviving into the Silurian. You go, trilobites! They stayed relatively the same throughout the Silurian as they were in the Ordovician, with a bit of exciting radiation, but they still looked like trilobites. These little guys continued to be a global phenomenon throughout the Silurian period and made their way into the Devonian. Now, back to our regularly scheduled programming. The apex predators of this period are another holdover from the Ordovician, although the Silurian is where they had their prime time. The Eurypterids, commonly known as sea scorpions, were a family of arthropods and weren't actually scorpions. In fact, they were most likely closer related to crabs and lobsters. As said before, the Silurian is when the Eurypterids really started branching out, with over 150 species known from Silurian rocks. They ranged from the tiny Alcanopterus at around 2 cm, to the massive Acutoramus, sizing in at around 6 to 7 feet long, taller than a human. 
Later, in the Devonian period, sea scorpions would grow to even larger sizes, becoming the largest arthropods to ever exist. The Eurypterid biology suggests they were carnivores, eating smaller invertebrates and even fish. The largest sea scorpions could have been their environment's most formidable predator. The Silurian, as well as many other periods, ended with a series of extinction events most likely connected to climate change. You might be noticing a trend here. However, these extinctions were relatively minor compared to some of the others and didn't hit the world too bad. Next time, on Tour Through Time, we'll slide into the Devonian and see what the world does next. I hope you'll stick around and subscribe to keep up to date with what I put out, and leave a like if you think I've earned it. Until next time, I've been Luke, and thanks for watching Paleontology Plus.